what you made me do. Look what I made for you. His name is Old Man. Old Man Wayne. I live by the car. I die by the phone. Old Man. Old Man Wayne. Old Man. I'm about to do something terrible. Nope, not doing this. We're not doing this. Ha <laughs> ha! Point old man. Old man. Old man. Welcome to the Old Man Wade Show. I am your host, the God of Stub and the Lord of Laughter, Old Man Wade. And I'm here with the pinnacle of political perfection, the superior, Super Bowl Javi. Yo. And also on the dance, we have Brandon Orton. What's happening? I don't really like your intro, but I'm going to work on it. I'll, I'll have something better for you next time. How are y'all doing today? What's going on? Man, it's, uh, it's, uh, everybody loves Mondays, so, you know, it's great. Are y'all cold yet? Nah. nah, it was 80 degrees. It's been like 80 degrees, bro. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. New England, no global warming. New England don't know what the fuck it wants to do. I thought it'd be snowing by now. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you'll laugh. Like, the last couple of winters have been kind of mild. Yeah. We got hit with that one real bad one like a decade ago. Actually, no longer than a decade ago, and it hasn't been that bad since. It's been we've had some bad winters, but that one when we it was like a snowstorm, like every other day, for like what was it like hobby like two weeks or like a month or something like that. Yeah, we had like yeah, we haven't had a winter like that for a while. I think last winter we had like some really cold days that thank God I missed because I was in Florida. But every every single cold day we had, every single like record breaking cold day we had last year, I was in Florida. So. Yay to me. But yeah, other than that, like it's been, you know, scarily comfortable. Yo, I can't uh, remember I can't remember where I was where there was like this really awful like uh burst your pipes like phrasing cold day. And I think me and Maria were in like California or some shit. <laughs> mm. Yeah. No, nah, man, climate change is real. I mean, regardless of where you think it comes from, like there's no denying like aliens and mermaids. They come from aliens and mermaids. changing, man. You know? Yo, do y'all still are y'all still hearing about like the COVID vaccine conspiracy theorists? Are y'all still hearing those? Yeah. No. They ever, did, did they dis, they did disappear? I thought they did, but like now it's just like Dr. Fauci should be arrested. I can't believe he made us take this this COVID shot. And like I got people at work like, yo. It's like I was like I regret taking them. I'm like yo, <laughs> but you, these like, are why the do same... they regret taking it? Like what what happened? Did they what 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 happened? I just like, you know I it... wish people would pick and choose what they want to say. Like does and doesn't work. Like these motherfuckers will will deny the the like a, the COVID vaccine, but then still take like Tylenol and ibuprofen and drink beer. And it's like dog. It's... <laughs> It's it's just fucking wild, man. They they just don't know where the fuck they want to go with this shit. It's it's kind of funny. Like make up your fucking minds, man. I mean, we can get into like conspiracy theories and where they come from, but at the end of the day, like it all like it's all like the same type of people, bro. Like people that are like anti institutionalist, you know, people that uh that just really. There's a lot of people that believe in conspiracy theories just because they want to believe in something that other that most people think is foolish because they think that's like smart. I have no. So I know you don't really like conspiracy theories, theories, but do mm-hmm. you have any that you actually like that you think are just like dumb? Like, what do you mean? That I I think. Go. What do you mean? Like, explain that. Explain. What do you mean? By like, for that? example, like. One of my favorite conspiracy theories. I think of a really good one. Biggie, like a <laughs> this one is stupid, but I love it. Biggie and Pac are still alive. Mm. Like, what's one that's so stupid that you're like, you know what? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, there's there's a class. I mean, there's, we we will stick to COVID, like that that classic COVID conspiracy theory that like. There's like five G chips in the COVID, but like that, like I don't even understand how that even works. Or, or we can go with the classic, the classic of classic conspiracy theories: flat Earth. 
Like, oh my god, I forgot about the flat Earth. That is just a, that's just frustratingly dumb. Yeah, you know, I love when people flat Earth people say around the world. I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like that. Say? You know that is, you know. I take it back. Flat Earthers are like my favorite. Are my favorites. Like they're just. And I remember the, I was in a flat Earth um, <laughs> Facebook group. Just Wait, for like, oh, just, did you add me to that? I think I may have, but it was you know it was. I have never seen so many like just stupid like theories of my life, and I was eating it up like Thanksgiving dinner. Like it was, it was, it was. Mm, that shit was great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's like, like, yeah, I have no prior knowledge of like any type of math, physics, you know, astronomy, astrophysics, nothing. I don't know anything other than like, you know, but I'm fairly certain that every science book known to man is wrong. And then it goes like, yo, why would they lie about the earth being flat? And their excuse is always like, because if they can convince you, if they can make you believe one thing, they can make you believe anything. Huh? Like, believing the earth is flat? No, that could be anything. That could literally be anything. Like, I will, okay, so I'm going to say this. This this one, I know you're probably just going to, like, you, you might disown me when I say this. I don't believe the moon landing happened. Okay. I do believe it eventually happened, but I don't think it happened yeah. when it well, that's more that's a more understandable conspiracy theory than others because like conce in a, conceivably there's there's a reality where, where that can be true, right? If you think about like the geopolitical time time, like like we'll get deep into it. Like you go like at that at that point in time, Russia and the US were having a big dick swing contest, right? And it was like the first person to reach the moon had the biggest dick at that moment. So conceivably, right, it's possible, it, it, like, there was an incentive to get to the moon, right? Um, and, you know, I can conceive of a possibility of us being lied to about that. I, it's, you know, I, there's at least a reason why that could be true, even though it's not true. We went to the moon. But saying the Earth is flat, looking at everything in the sky and seeing its shape and just saying the one one thing that does not apply to that convention is Earth is crazy. All right, so so what, <laughs> I just googled um, popular conspiracy theories, and I have a and I have a list. I have an article here. Oh boy, Let's do it. <laughs> God, let me know I'm, because I'm not on the um, on the Zoom. Let me know when Brandon pops back in. Yep. All right. The not nine eleven conspiracy theories. We know all about those. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else is there? Um, Princess Diana's murder. What's the conspiracy theory around that? She's not dead. Uh, let's see. Within the hour, within hours of Princess Diana's death on August thirtieth, nineteen ninety-seven, in a Paris highway tunnel, conspiracy theories swirled. As was the case that uh, the death of John F. Kennedy, the idea that such a beloved high-profile figure could be killed so suddenly was a shock. This was especially true for uh, Princess Diana royalty die of old age, political intrigue, or eating too much rich food, they don't get killed by the common drunk driver. So oh, why? Are they immortal? Like, are they immune to getting hit by drunk drivers? Like, I don't see. They're, like, so they're saying basically that it was somebody made that happen. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, I guess. It's possible. Uh, subliminal advertising. Uh, in 1980s, concern of subliminal uh, messages spread to uh, the band such as Styx and Judas Priest, which, uh, with the latter band even being sued in 1990 for allegedly causing teens suicidal suicide with subliminal messages, the case was dismissed. Subliminal mental processing does does exist and can be tested. So, what do you think about that one? Um, I don't. When it comes to so, yes, but there, but it's not as um, secretive as people might think, right? Like, advertisers use all types of subliminal, like, techniques to get people to buy things or to control people's behavior. Like, certain stores use certain weight, like, certain light temperatures, right, to either keep people in them or rush people out, right? 
there's certain colors that that advertisers would use, right? There's certain sounds, certain things that people would use, but that's not necessarily like some type of hidden secret. It's it's just advertisement techniques. Yeah, it it, it uses basic human psychology to get us to buy, you know, caffeinated oh, but beverages. With this, they're they're talking about they use it through like um through the subconscious to make you buy things. And again, I'm I mean sure, but it's not. I don't think they. I mean, have you met Americans? <laughs> Do you think we need that to, to to buy stuff? Like, I don't, I don't like. We're we're a consumer culture, right? Like, uh, I get the... it. I I get it, but like, don't blame subliminal messaging for your own like, for our own behavior when it comes to like buying shit we don't need. Uh, the next one is Paul McCartney's death. Uh, da, 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 da. The Paul the Paul is dead conspiracy goes something like this: On November 9th, nineteen sixty six, Paul McCartney got into an argument with one of the other Beatles. Beatles stormed out of the studio and was promptly decapitated in a car accident. To cover the whole thing up, the band hired a lookalike and sound alike. Again, why? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, it's it's documented that mus- bands and musicians and stuff make more money. Once somebody dies, right? Like, why would they? Oh. Uh, there's also the JFK shot in 1963 in, in a Dallas motorcade. But did Lee Harvey Oswald act alone, or was there a second gunman on the grassy knoll? We all know that's false. We know that Magneto was actually there on the grassy knoll trying mm-hmm. to protect him, and there was a second mm-hmm. shooter. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's a fact. It was either, wasn't it like, ah, shit, wasn't it like Winter Soldier? I don't remember. Winter Soldier killed him. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Winter Soldier. I think it was Soldier. Yeah, I think um that meant so that means Winter Soldier is actually better than Magneto. Yeah. Uh we got the Ros the Roswell crash and cover up. I firmly believe that aliens did have been here. I believe they are here. A buddy of mine did a had a really good explanation how how we see in a well, we see in what, in a three dimensional world? Is that where we're at? Um yes. So, like, if we're looking in a three-dimensional world, we may not be able to look into, like, a fourth or fifth dimension, and that's why, like, there there could be beings among us. We just, our, our minds just can't perceive them. I think that's actually kind of dope. Um, interesting theory, but it's a theory. Uh, I'm Nothing skipping more. this. I mean... I'll- I'm yeah. skipping this next one because it's like super anti-Semitic. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it moving. Like it's oh, nasty. I mean, I'm not even gonna bother reading it. Okay. I mean, I'm given the day and age and what we're dealing with right now, I think that's a smart move. But also, I think a lot of people end up doing things that may be anti-Semitic and not know it. Yeah, I agree. Um, because it's so it, it's so part like certain things are so part of our culture that we don't even realize like. What we're doing sometimes, yeah, or how we're uh, harming people. The satanic panic. I have never heard of this one. Uh, for oh, years, this was in the seventies and eighties. Yep. Uh, dur- uh, for years during the eighties and nineties, America became convinced that an underground network of satanists, a uh, satan, excuse me, was working together to kidnap, torture, and abuse children. Oh yeah, that's that's about as old as time. Yeah. Uh, chemtrails. So that's um, you know the the the. Condensation. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what it is. But the when you see a plane and you see that line, I don't even think you see that anymore with modern engines. I've seen. Engines, but. I actually saw one last week, and it was so fucking weird. Like I just didn't yeah. think that existed anymore. But um, yeah, it's they're they're apparently the airline industries in cahoots with like the pharmaceutical industries to like spread chemicals through plane engines or some bullshit. I don't know. That that's crazy. How do you know this? It kills me that you actually know this stuff. So I talk to people. You know that. Uh true. Uh Barack Obama birtherism. I mean yeah, that's that's what got Trump on the the map, right? The political map. Uh uh, uh that Barack Obama was not born in America. Yeah. He's a Kenyan immigrant. Uh, we talked about the plant, the pandemic. Oh my God, I've never heard this one. Birds aren't real. Oh yeah, I, I actually know somebody that believes that thoroughly. <laughs> oh, I need to read this. Uh, yeah, the birds aren't real conspiracy is a movement developed by Peter Mc, uh, Mc, 
McLondon, McLinden, or whatever, he, uh, who started yeah, spreading yeah. the idea in 2017 until December 2021. Uh, in 2017, until a December 21, uh, 2021 interview in the New York Times, uh, he stayed in character as a true believer, insisting mm-hmm. in media interviews and online that birds mm-hmm. aren't real, but but they are rather surveillance drones made by the U.S. government. Birds aren't real has a staff. It has an organized real... <laughs> and a website, yeah. Yo, mm-hmm. this is fucking hilarious! Fun fact, fun fact. Um, Someone, you know, who's close to me, right? Um, the young man, um, he, so I was aware of this fact. I was aware that this guy created this website, created this whole movement as a troll movement to kind of like pick at conspiracy theories, right? And so the theory, again, birds aren't real. They're actually surveillance drones, blah, 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 blah. He literally made it out of whole cloth. He just made it up. And a few years later, this young gentleman came to me and was like, hey, I know you don't believe in conspiracy theories, but I don't think birds are real. They're actually drones. And I expeditiously showed him everything I can about this. (laughs) (laughs) I I showed him everything about this guy making it up, like, you know, just like this guy, I'm like, this guy literally made this whole thing up that you're talking. And he's like, well, how do you know he made it up? Because it's right here in front of you. Like I was, and yeah, to this day, he still believes birds are fake. Which is, Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I truly believe that there could be like, you know, real life, like drones that to made to look like birds. I believe that. But to tell me birds aren't real is by far one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it's um yeah. Uh, we got the flat Earth. Uh, the flat Earth conspiracy theories first arose around the nineteen fifties and have been given new life during the age of the internet. Da, 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 da. But flat Earth believers don't see beyond their own horizon. The line between the Earth and the sky um, looks pretty flat. They figure, <laughs> and all the rest of the evidence gets tossed out of the window. On YouTube and message boards, flat Earthers spend their time inventing weird physics to try to explain how things like gravity, lunar eclipses could possibly work. Um, if Earth were a flat disk, mm-hmm. many are motivated by religious beliefs. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, COVID treatments cause COVID deaths. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one I mean, of my favorite. One of my favorites. Reptilians run the U.S. government. Oh, that's an old. That's an oldie, but a goodie. I love that. That that is absolutely an oldie and a goodie. Like, mm-hmm. the, let's see what else we got on here. Uh, health authorities are hiding natural cures. I can kind of see that happening just because, you know, if you can't, Why? like, it's, it's like weed. What What do you mean? They tried that, like, with weed, like, they tried their best to, like, kind of, like, you know, make it a criminal thing because things like, like, you know, medicinal medicines can actually help people. And Where'd you hear that? They literally they are literally using it now because, like, for example, like with cancer patients, it actually helps them with like eating and stuff like that. But like, you can't tell someone to do that because it's like you know it's illegal. And well, I also I think so. No, no, good. Uh, marijuana, like weed being illegal, it has less to do with some perceived like some perceived medicinal purposes that threaten pharmaceutical companies and more to do with um, a general um, scare tactic, right? Like it was really a way of, um, it, it, it was really a way of, of showing that these drugs, right, would cause white women to sleep with black men, right? Or like this epidemic is changing the um, the fabric of Christian American culture. Like it was really, it had nothing to do with that, and it was purely cultural at that point. Like it, it was really no purpose other than scaremongering, right? Like this new conservative at the time, a new conservative Christian right. Um, you know, you mix it in with also like with the prohibition stuff. Like it, it was a real movement, right? Um, yeah. That kind of it got swept up in 
and for some reason never really changed until like recently and it's still there's still a lot of roadblocks i think that when people say that pharmaceutical companies are keeping certain treatments away because the treatment is more lucrative than the cure again i'm not going to say that there aren't people that think that way but trust me if a pharmaceutical company found a cure for cancer they will freaking sell that joint immediately because they will be able to print money. I can see that. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like, I think that it's a misunderstanding of kind of the um, business incentives that pharmaceutical companies actually have. If that make, I hope that makes sense. It does. So this one, a lot of this has to do with uh, um, fan. This is a uh, fan theories gone wild is what the, 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 the title is. Uh, not all conspiracy theories are political or even that uh, <laughs> consequential. The world on the internet fandoms can be wild with true believers on social media spinning uh, dramatic tales from their favorite celebrities' real lives. Uh, one of my favorites was the Avril Lavigne is dead and her stunt double's been around since, I think they said, 2003. Yeah, just basically that. Like, that, that's mm. basically those random ones. What's your favorite conspiracy theory, old man? Uh, so far, I think about birds, man. Mm, mm. That's <laughs> the winner. On. That's the winner. Hold up, they want you to eat bugs. <laughs> what? Wait, <laughs> is what? this snow? Is this snow piercer? <laughs> I mean, bugs are actually uh, what? <laughs> yeah. To combat climate change, experts recommend eating less meat or more plants. In some circles, this advice for a uh, warming planet has transferred into something more sinister. The ruling class wants everyone else to eat bugs. Yeah. So, you know, that's what rich, rich, powerful people just think of ways to, like, screw poor people all the time. And I, and I get that inclination to feel that way, but rich people at the end of the day are just people, bro. Oh, my God. Denver Airport is a hub for the Illuminati. I believe that. I'm gonna go with that theory. That's a that's the conspiracy theory I'm gonna believe. Den Denver's not a real place. So oh, Jeff thinks that Idaho it doesn't exist. It doesn't. It Wait, doesn't. you know you realize I know people who live in Denver, right? You know. No, it it's 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 all it's all the Dakotas. You realize they have a whole football team, right? In Denver's yeah. also where John ja Morant did that dumb shit in the strip club, right? The NFL is in on it. Major I, sports teams are in on it. They want you to believe those places exist to sell more tickets. Uh, you know, if y'all want to read the list for yourselves, uh, just Google uh, popular conspiracy theories. It's on uh, this this particular one is on LiveScience.com. I just Google yeah, things. I'm sorry, go ahead. This shit is just, this is just, I don't even have words for this stuff, dog. Like, how do you, like, <laughs> like what? I want to start a conspiracy theory. That's what I want to do. Start, you want to start a conspiracy theory? I want to start one. What would you, what What would it, okay, what would it be based on? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, so it has to be, it has to be political, right? Like, yeah. It has to be a political expert. Like I feel like there's like a there's a structure to conspiracy theories. So it has to be political. There has to be like a political like incentive for people to like oh, hide something. Another one we forgot about. Forgot about the top Democrats are hide are um behind a sex trafficking ring. Oh yeah, yeah. At a pizza shop. Yeah, at a pizza shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's that's part that's one of the that's that's something that um actually stuck to Hillary Clinton. Which is crazy. I, I found another one I agree with. There's a him is a hidden chamber filled with government secrets behind Mount Rushmore. Um you know what's crazy about this? I guarantee you, and this it comes from this, what you just said. I guarantee you the majority of these conspiracy theories you can trace to some movie script. Oh yeah, a thousand percent. Uh, that's another... definitely national treasure. Another one I another one I believe in in this <laughs> the Eiffel Tower is a weapon. I mean 
Then she's, he's, you know, I was gonna say something really dirty, but let me, let me not say that. What kind of weapon? <laughs> when Galactus comes down, he wants wants to do some butt stuff. <laughs> the devil's butt plug. I'm sorry if I offended any French people. Devil's butt plug. I wonder if YouTube will accept that as a as a a, a uh, title I can use. The Eiffel Tower was a devil's butt plug. Oh, uh, oh man! All right. Uh, looks like Brandon had to drop out. He may not come back. Uh, but if he comes back on, I'll obviously let him in. So I have a list. Getting into some nerdy shit. Uh, ten things, ten facts you should know about Wolverine. All right. The first one is easily my favorite. The guy who poisoned Wolverine's ex-lover, uh, Mariko, every year on the anniversary of her, of her death, Wolverine would show up at this dude, wherever this dude was, and then take a part, take a part of his body. Every Wait, year. what? So the first year he did it, Wolverine cut his arm, cut his hand off. The next year, Wolverine cut his nose off. And then, like, he took its gallbladder. <laughs> like, he would just show up and just take, just, like, remove pieces of his body every year. Like, how do you even find somebody's gallbladder? Wolverine's been around long enough. I'm pretty sure he's actually sat in on a surgery and knows where it's at. Yeah, I don't even know if Wolver he... Wolverine is a secret MD. <laughs> he, went to, he, went to, he went to medical school in the 1920s. I mean, he was in Canada. Free health care, I guess. I don't know. All right, true. All right, true. Uh, Wolverine was born a sickly kid. Yep. I I personally think that was just his body getting used to all the uh, germs and diseases and viruses. So, Building an immunity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, he beat the devil. Which devil? Uh, like the Christian devil, like in hell. Really? Mm-hmm. Beat him in hell, uh, and like kind of crucified and almost crucified him because he, he was in hell, so he didn't have his adamantium claws, so he had his bone claws. He takes the bone claws and he like pins them to a wall. It's actually kind of cool. That's only interesting because I never really read a story that involved the Christian devil in Marvel comics. Well, that I seems like more of a DC thing. They didn't. They didn't necessarily call him the Christian devil, but they but uh, it's Jason Aaron, so you know he mm. was like dope enough to kind of like say it without saying it. Yeah. Uh he killed all of his kids. He was tricked into killing his kids, excuse me. Logan ended up so after he gets out of hell, he went to go hunt down everybody who sent him there. Mm -hmm. In order to get to the get there, he had to run through he had to go through I think six or eight people. Mm -hmm. And then once he once he gets to the final place, there's a video playing and the person goes, we finally got revenge on you the way, the only way we thought we could. All the people you just killed were your children, and he didn't even know it. Now, now here's the funny thing about it. All the people who were in this thing, they were called the Red, I think the Red Right Hand, I think that's what they were called. It's a group of people who were all done wrong by Wolverine. The problem was, Wolverine wasn't either wasn't in his right mind. There was one person he who he killed who wasn't and he wasn't in his right mind. This was during the um Enemy of the State series. But everybody else he killed were just awful people. And so when they all died, they all killed themselves after that. They all died and they ended up going to hell. And it was just kind of funny. It's just like, you know, you guys were evil and you your parents and the people you love when was evil. Except for one kid who went and killed himself and he was looking for his mom, but his mother wasn't in hell because she wasn't a bad person. She just happened to be a casualty of some stuff that happened. Uh, Wolverine trained Black Widow. He was the first person to train her. Okay. I actually mentioned this on the on the last episode. Wolverine has to fight the... He had to fight the Angel of Death to get his soul back. I don't think that's even a thing anymore, but, you know. Mm. He was a member of the Fantastic Four. You know, this, this this list is kind of the reason why 
it took me a while to start liking Wolverine. Why so? Because I feel I felt, and I, I like Wolverine's character. Don't get me wrong, especially now. But for me, it was almost like the Batman thing, right? Like he can literally do everything. I think it's kind of no dope, limitations. Though. I think it's kind of dope though, but like the only of the of the only other thing about it that I think is kind of weird with Wolverine is where they have him. It's not so much anymore, and I'm happy. But once upon a time, it seemed like he was everywhere. You know what I mean? That kind of bugs. Well, and I think, and that's that's what it was. And it wasn't for me. It wasn't about telling a good story. It was capitalizing on a character that they can make money off. Yes. At that point, Wolverine was one of the most, if not the most, popular character. So what ended up happening is that a lot of other characters ended up taking a back seat, which is fine. But it again, it wasn't in order to tell a good story, in my opinion. It really was just like a cash grab. I agree. Um, I'm I... thinking about the the X Men movies. You know, like. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I was I was just agreeing with you. Like, yeah, like yeah. we both we both understand that like what it was and but mm-hmm. like Hugh Hugh Jackman should not have not Hugh, Hugh Jackman or Wolverine should not have been the leader of those X Men teams. Like it should have been Cyclops or it should have been Jean Grey, mm-hmm. or even Storm. Yeah, right, I felt like yeah. And it was funny because I thought they did a fantastic job with Cyclops in the first X Men movie, mm-hmm. and then for some but, reason it just got worse and worse. It was like. Well, I think I think the character that played Cyclops, I think it was a number a number of things. If you look at like the production, again, I think the production, a lot, a lot of the actors kind of felt the same way, that they weren't getting the type of exposure from those roles they wanted to, right? Like they they were ended up they ended up being like secondary characters. I think that's why um the character that played was it Masterson? I forgot his name, but um Mark Masterson. Yeah. Up, My, I think it's Mark Masterson. Yeah, he actually left that production. Um, I think that partially was because of that. They kind of focus on Wolverine. Versus... Yeah, oh, excuse me, James, um, James Marsden. Marsden, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, James Marsden. Yeah, like it's, but hopefully, um, hopefully the um MCU will get it right though. Can yeah. you name the other three members that were on the Fantastic Four that Wolverine was on? The one that he was actually on. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, I cannot. All right, I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. One of them, one of them's a scientist. One of them's an agent of heaven, and the other one is the strongest there is. So the Hulk. Yep. Agent of heaven. He was also thought to be an agent of hell. I mean, the Punisher was the agent of heaven at one point. Spider Man. He's one of them. One of them. The last uh, one's Ghost. last one's Ghost Rider. What Ghost Rider was a Fantastic Four was a Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. I did not know that it was Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Spider Man, and the Hulk. Mm. Uh, Wolverine. Wolverine opened a school after Schism. I honestly think that was one of the best things Logan's ever done. I thought him opening the school was super fucking dope and impressive. Mm-hmm. I think that it was a point in, I think this was one of those things where it's like he's been a father figure and a big brother for so long, I thought the natural thing for him to do would be to open a school. I thought it was a fantastic idea. Those anatomy classes must have been crazy. Like, yeah, he could look, this he is could how look. you remove a gallbladder. <laughs> like, can you picture him like an anatomy class and he just like literally just opens his arm up to show people what, what it looks like? He's like, yeah, you can uh, kill somebody slow by taking out this organ. You can kill them fast by taking out this organ. I'm trying to find the, the okay, yeah. So in one of the classes, this is the he, so he's in front of a bunch of kids, right? And he goes, "No, what part don't you understand? If a ninja master confronts you head on, I do. That means, yeah, that means that the other ninjas are going to attack you from the sides and from behind. A ninja master never confronts you unless himself. <laughs> it was like these are the things Wolverine was teaching kids." <laughs> But can look go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I said, um, Kate Pride definitely took those, he's definitely the valedictorian of that class. It's just she was on um, headmistress for a while. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet she was headmistress. <laughs> oh, god, that was great. That was that was fantastic, dude. That 
pat yourself on the back on the, on their back for that. Um, <laughs> Wolverine is scared of um open. Wolverine is scared of water. I would be if I had a heavy ass adamantium skeleton. Yeah, he's terrified by water because it's the it's one of the only things that can kill him. And the last people should have just drowned drowned him. I'm surprised that didn't happen more often. I know um, Logan drowned Dakin. Yeah, that shit was just in a puddle of in like just like a puddle of water just drowned him. I was like Jesus, man. I mean, to be fair, Dakin was an asshole. Oh yeah, he de- he deserved every he deserved exactly what he got. You know what I mean? Yeah. What else do we got on the docket? Oh yeah, do you know about the Gotham War? I do not. So in Gotham War, I know nothing about it. Explain it to me. Gotham War started when Catwoman decided that the best thing to do would be to find all the henchmen for like the Joker, Two Face, et cetera, et cetera, and give them a way to make make a living. So mm-hmm. she teaches them how to be better cat burglars, how to be better criminals, how to be better fighters. Mm-hmm. Batman is like, fuck that, you're just teaching them to be better criminals. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is right? the man that there's a man that trained Jason Todd, okay, which is funny. Which is funny. He comes up. Which is funny. He comes up too in this uh, yeah. topic as well. Who do you think is right in this situation? Catwoman. Or do you th- or you think they're either one of them, or or you think they're both wrong in in this? Catwoman. I I I I rarely ever ever agree with Batman in anything he does. So Catwoman. See, I go the other way. I think they're both wrong, but in the series, it's actually so in the series. All the people that Catwoman trained are now working for oh, what the hell is this idiot's name? He's an old caveman. He's been around forever. Uh Vandal Savage. Vandal Savage. They're all working for Vandal Savage now with the promise of mm. eternal life. And then all of the a lot of the Gotham villains have now teamed up to fight to fight back. So basically they just train better. They're like gonna have better trained henchmen. <laughs> If I lived in Gotham City, I would be a villain. Here's why I'd be a villain. Because who? what else can you do? The cops are so inept at their job that they depend heavily on a, 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 a pretty poorly adjusted billionaire <laughs> in a bat suit, right? And his child soldiers to beat up. <laughs> So listen so listen to this. So check this shit out, right? <laughs> so during this series, Batman uh drugs Jason Todd and then hits him with this, like then he like he injects him with like a version of the fear toxin mm-hmm. that if he ever gets if his adrenaline glands go up, he becomes like paralyzed with fear. Yeah, and that's the good guy. <laughs> and I was on Twitter and someone I was on Twitter and someone said the funniest shit ever. There was like Batman gave Jason Todd super anxiety. <laughs> yo, I could not stop laughing because it's so yeah. fucking true. Uh, I'm telling you, Batman's not a good guy, bro. He's not. He's the worst. <laughs> he's the worst. <laughs> yo, he really, yo, Batman is the fucking worst, man. Mm. He he went through a traumatic experience. Not everybody else should feel his pain, essentially. After Catwoman. And let's also not um let's also not act like and I've said this before, there's a nickel's difference between Jason Todd and Batman. The only difference is how they were raised. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But Jason Todd didn't have the luxury of falling back on billions of dollars. No, no. no. <laughs> well and his biggest mistake was freaking teaming up with Bruce Wayne. Yo, he stole the hubcats off he stole the wheels off the fucking Batmobile. Good. Like, you know, that takes some balls, man. Mm. Oh, man. So there was a topic that Brandon brought up that I thought was kind of cool. He was going to lead this, but shout out to Brandon for even bringing this up to begin with. And this was a tweet from writer Gail Simone, icon in the comic book community. She goes, you get to date three Marvel villains on three consecutive nights, they pick the location and activities, but they can't cause you any harm. Who do you choose? Marvel villains. Yeah. So I have my list. Are you ready for my list? 
Yeah, I'm ready for your list. Number one is easy enough, Mystique. Mm. Like, mm, yeah. She'll get you into so much trouble, but beyond that, I feel like she like she would just be so much goddamn fun on a date. Like the things that she could do and the places that she could like tell you and the stories that she could um tell about her what close to a hundred years on earth, I think would be super fun. Mm. Number two, I'm going hella. Really? Being able to, to uh, you, you want to be her, you want to be her sex slave in hell. She can't, as long as she can't hurt me. Okay. I mean, think about it, like this. Imagine being able to like just kind of see what she does on her day to day, or where she would take you on a date. Like the mm. nine, the ten realms, dog. You can go anywhere in the ten realms. Mm. All right. <laughs> and lastly, Wilson Fisk. Oh my God, that dude is really. Fucking- that dude is fucking loaded. There's no way you don't end up eating the best food served by like half naked people. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can tell he's one of those dudes who has like like those sushi, those naked sushi models mm. where you where you're eating like California rolls off their bellies. Yeah. Well, he's gonna have you eating something, all right. <laughs> Fisk dick. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's loaded. <laughs> Kingpin card. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> have, you, have you eat his sushi? <laughs> Wilson's Willy. <laughs> <laughs> Willy Fisk. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, man. Hello, Wade. I'd like you to I'd like to introduce you to yourself to myself. This mm. is my Kingpin Kane. Yo, Wilson Fisk looks like the type of dude who has a Prince Albert, too. You think, I mean, who's he dating? Who's his wife? Um, Typhoid Mary. Yes. Um, she definitely would only date a dude with uh, that particular <laughs> person. Who's on your list? All right, so. Oh, also, honorable mention Tony Stark, because he can be a fucking villain. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um... So, should I give you the obvious one first? Yeah, give me the obvious one first. Emma Frost. Yeah, th- that's that was a given. I mean, you already know. And then I'm going to go with Yelena Belova, Scarlet, um, Black Widow's sister, but from the MCU, MCU as played by oh, uh, God, Florence yeah. Pogue. Yes. I mean, I mean. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I yes. keep, okay, so I, <laughs> I keep forgetting. Google, I can't. I keep forgetting to Google her nude scene for Oppenheimer. I don't even want to do it. I I feel like she's a treasure that should be um protected at all times. I mean, she's been naked and stuff before, so this is nothing new. Yeah, true. Um, and then also Agatha Harkness, as played by um Catherine Hahn, played by Catherine Hahn. Okay, and uh, WandaVision. It's a damn good thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially considering like it's Catherine Hahn, like that would be so much goddamn fun. So much fun. And she's funny. Mm-hmm. And what do you got for the last one? Oh, there's supposed to be four. Ooh, dang it. No, mm. no, three. I did. I gave you uh um, oh, yeah. yeah, you said yeah, Emma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Emma, Elena, Agatha. All right. Uh, before we get into our our what are we segment, what are some popular comic books, comic book series that everyone loves that you think are mid? Mm. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you some as I'm as I'm thinking about it. Mm. I think the Killing Joke was mid. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Dark Knight Returns was mid. I disagree with that. Um, Civil War was mid. Civil War was bad, actually. If we're gonna be mm-hmm. honest about it. Civil War was Civil War was not good, mm-hmm. and it kills me that people say it is. I'm like, nah, Civil War was not good, dog. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, miss me with that. Like that, it was not good. Let's see. Oh, is, um, that, is that the okay. ultimate? The first ultimate series. Wait, wait a minute. Not not Which ultimate. Okay, 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 not, okay. Not um, not about ultimate universe. The ultimate universe, ultimate series. It's good, mm-hmm. but 
it's also kind of not good at all. Like it's for something that was that's heralded as a classic, it does mm-hmm. not hold up like at all. It's kind of bad. <laughs> Let me know when you're done. I'm done. If I think anything else, I'll let you know. All right. Age of Apocalypse. I agree. I feel like it did. I feel like it did not age well. Like I loved it as a kid, but and a lot of these. What I'm gonna say, these are ones that I've read that I, I probably liked at one point, but rereading them, I I don't know. I think they they might have just been products of their time. The original Secret Wars, bro. I know, and I know people are gonna hate me for this one, because this is like so much, so much happy, like so much. So much is connected to the Secret Wars, like you know, the Beyonder, um, the Spider Man's Venom suit, like a lot of stuff is connected to that series. But not a fan. I do not disagree with that. I I thought about it, but I wasn't sure if I was like I because I remember liking it, but I think that comes across. I think that's kind of what I was talking about with X Men Red. The last like few issues, mm-hmm. they've been there were good moments, but I don't know if it was good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, like mm. I'm going to rock with you on that one. Yep. Um, and Avengers versus X-Men. Oh, that shit was super mid. It was, the, yeah. action, the action was fun. The comedy was fun. The artwork was was okay. But honestly, like that shit was just not like it for yeah, something that was supposed to be like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't hit. Oh, you I got one more. I got one more after that. I, and, and 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 it just. I, I wish I picked this one instead of Avengers vs. X Men. Access. Access. A X I S. Does anybody even talk about that being good? I don't know. I, I don't. Just, I, I don't like it. I I've never met a person who's actually like that. Really? Okay. Good. So yeah, because well. like it, it's ugh. that was probably the worst crossover ever. And I love Rick Remender. He's one of my like Rick Remender wrote um Deadly Class. And I think Deadly Class is among like the 10 best comic books that I think anybody should read. But that shit was just ugh. Hmm. It was bad. Just bad, 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 bad. And let me <laughs> let me show throw a little hate. Let me throw a little hate to um DC Blackest Night. I think it was good, but I don't think it was as good as a lot of people think it is. Can I also just tell you that I liked that book up until the very last, until like the crescendo, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have all these characters. Oh, who was it? it? was Mera, Lex Luthor. All of uh, them. Everybody. Literally everybody. I'm trying to, because there was like a specific like group of them that like helped pave the way for what, you know what I mean? For what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then after all of that, it's the Justice League that saves the day. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I hated that man. It was like, yo, you guys had all these people do the work. Let them be the saviors of this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was. I thought that was. I thought that was super whack. I thought that was super whack. And I. I ugh, it was bad. Mm-hmm. All right. End this like we normally do. Javi, what are you watching? What are you reading? All right. So reading is. I got my little list. Here. Hold on a second. So I'm actually not reading this one. I'm actually listening to this one. This is an inside joke between me and the old man. Um, Fuck you. <laughs> I'm slowly going through this audio book. Um, it's, um, where is it? Uh, and There Was Light. Um, Abraham Lincoln and the American Struggle by John Meacham. And I think this is actually, I, I, I thought of this one. Because, you know, we've been talking about doing like a political segment and all this other stuff we've been talking about. And I think understanding Abraham Lincoln as a man of his time and what that actually really means and what was actually going on around the Civil War and what uh, the thoughts people actually had about slavery at the time, I think is very important for people to actually know, given um, what some school districts and states, state governments are trying to do to that history. Like they would make you believe that you know slavery was just something that people understood at the time as being necessary, and like you can't really be upset at people for supporting slavery because it was just something they did at that time. When you look at these types of when you when you read these types of stories, and you actually look at 
the contemporary works and words of people at that time, contemporane contemporaneous, I can't say that word, of that time, you understand that slavery was always seen as an evil by a, by large plural, plurality, pluralities, I can't speak, and majorities of people, right? So, you know, even books like Uncle Tom's Cabin, like we, we say things about Uncle Tom, whatever, whatever, but that was actually a book written to explain to white people in the North or people that didn't have any experience with slavery how bad that institution actually was and what it was actually doing to people that actually were human just like you. Um, it also explains that the Civil War wasn't about states' rights, as people would like you to believe. It really was a war to end slavery because it was an institution that embarrassed the Union at the time. Um, so, yeah, I think it's very important for people to, you know, know your history. And then I'm watching... Um, know your history or you're doomed to repeat it. Exactly. Um, I'm watching... This is an oldie, but I actually started watching this recently with the white um, Dragon Ball Z Kai. Yes. So it's actually Dragon Ball Z, the original Dragon Ball Z that we're all, you know, familiar with, but it was remastered. A lot of the stuff that we missed in the American cuts, like a lot of the blood and a lot of the context, right? They added, but they also took away a lot of the filler. So it, it it's a lot, it's a lot more, it's a lot, it's a lot more fun watch. Um, and it reminds me of just how classic Dragon Ball is and, you know, it's one of those animes that just aged really well. Nice. Yeah. So for reading, I'm going back and you, okay. So let me just go off by saying this. You know how sometimes when you first read something, when you're like younger and you don't really understand, like you don't it doesn't really hit the way it's supposed to, so you stop reading it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, this is what I'm reading now. It's called The Wicked Plus The Divine. It's also it's written by someone you love. Um, he, uh, Karen Gillan. Mm -hmm. It's about so the premise of the book is every I want to say sixty six years or maybe it's ninety two years I can't remember what it is. Got the the bodies of the essence of the of gods go into human bodies. Now they don't get to choose. It just happens. It just it's just the way it is. But they die within two years. So they're given the powers of the gods and they're just going to die in two years. Some other stuff happens within it. Um, Lucifer kills somebody, kills some people who are trying to kill, hit, kill her. And they get, and then it's like, like, you know, well, who set, who set Lucifer up? And then Lucifer gets put on trial and he, excuse me, and she snaps her fingers and then the judge's head explodes. But you find out that Lucifer didn't actually do that, yeah. and then like the then there's like a war against the against the gods and Lucifer, and then there's somebody above it all. There's like mystery and betrayal. It's fucking dope, and I'm glad that I actually went back and decided to watch it specifically because this is one of those things that I didn't really appreciate it because I didn't like the way one of the turns went because I really liked the character and I was like fuck that sucked but going back and reading it it actually made me enjoy the show uh, enjoy the comic book even more mm. and as for watching it's something that I finished watching and I gotta shout out Brandon because he kept telling me to watch this it's called Orphan Black with Tatiana Maslany yeah, you guys have been talking about that yeah yeah Brandon had um, been telling me about it for a while and Actually, he started telling me about it when she was cast to play She-Hulk, and I had never seen the show. He was like, yo, just based off of what she did alone in that show, it was like, it's a great choice. And it's rare in the comic book community where you get a person who is cast in something and no one has anything negative to say about the casting. And I didn't, and I was like, oh, that's super dope. Like, you know what I mean? So in my wife had already watched seasons one and two of Black Orphan, but then it left Netflix. So I caught up on it, obviously, like years later. It's a BBC or a Canadian show, whatever, but we wa I watch it, and so we find out that there's clones in this in this show, and you find out, like, 
why they're being cloned, who's cloning them. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of mystique behind it. And Tatiana Maslany plays over a dozen different characters who look like her, except with different like hair, different uh, styles of clothing. She is so good in this. And Brandon said it best when he goes, even seeing Tatiana Maslany and knowing it's her, every character she plays doesn't look like her. Faces are the same. Like she changes like the voice pattern. She changes the way they move. She changes the way they talk. She uses different accents. It's, she is flawless in this show. She won some awards for it. And I tell, and like honestly, like, I don't say this often. There's like maybe like a handful of people that I will say put on like flawless performances. Like among them, I would put like Tom Hiddleston in Loki as Loki is, is like perfect. Like, you know what I mean? She's miles above anything that I've seen from somebody in a show. Miles. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone put on a performance in a show as good as she has. And I don't know if anybody ever will because she was asked to do so much and then did so much. It's, it was it was awe inspiring to be honest with you, and it, we only went five seasons. I think there's only fifty episodes. I think it's ten episodes a season, fifty episodes. Um, you'll love you'll love a lot of the characters she plays. You'll hate some of the characters she plays because they're just awful people and the things that they do to each other. And I and it's dope. It's super dope. I highly recommend it. Orphan Black and Tatiana Maslany, her performance was. I hate using this phrase, but chef's kiss. Yeah. I need to put that on the list after that description. I definitely got to put it on the list. Yeah. Um, if I could do another, um, because this is on AMC. If I can add another one to AMC, it would be Killing Eve. Never heard of it. Um, I'm going to give you the cast right now. Killing mm-hmm. Eve stars Jodie Comer and Sandra O. Oh. oh, I like Sandra O. Sandra O is fantastic. She's in this. awesome. Yeah. Jodie Comer plays a an assassin, but she's like a sociopath, <laughs> and like, <laughs> and she's absolutely hilarious throughout this show. I might, I actually, if you watch it, if you're up for watching it, I'll rewatch it with you. That's how good that show is. Mm. Oh, and shout out to you for putting me on the lower decks. Yo, oh, such a good show. It is. All right. This has been the Old Man Wade Show. I want to thank Superwalk Harvey for joining us. Uh, shout out to Brandon. He actually had to go do some work. But uh, shout out to him because he was going to make it, but he just had some stuff he needed to do. And you know I always say home first. Yeah, Super definitely. Woke. Tell everyone where they can find B-Rebel Media. Uh, check us out on Instagram, B-Rebel Media. B-Rebel, B-E-R-E-B-L underscore media on Instagram. And um, I don't, we're all over the place, man. Yeah. Make sure you... um. Click that follow button, hit those likes. The videos are dope. They're really well put together. The photography is amazing. Um, you actually did shout out to my whole boy Fletcher. You um did his uh family photos and they came out fucking fantastic, man. So shout that was out to fun. You. That was a fun shoot. Yeah, Fletcher's a great dude. He's a fun dude, and his yeah. family's like love wonderful and loving. And I, I love that yeah. dude. Yeah. Uh you can find me at old man wade com O L D M A N. W A D E C O M on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find my writing at Bam Smack Pal. Mark, just Google that Bam Smack Pal M A R K. You'll find all the stuff that I write, all the articles, stuff that I do. Thank you for joining us, and as always, be excellent to each other. Peace. Fall black. No! Fall black. Fall black. Fall black. No. No. Wait.